Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. John LaPook. Welcome to CBSDoc.com. I'm in the belly of the CBS Broadcast Center, and today we're going to be talking about something that's not all that interesting, creating life in a test tube. Today we found one blue colony, and we believe that this is our first synthetic cell. It's alive! <laughs> this is the first organism that doesn't have a genetic parent. The genetic parent is the computer. Now, this organism is very similar to an organism that's well-defined, that uh, has been uh, studied quite a bit in, in the laboratory. And this is the first step, because if you can create an organism that's well-defined, then you can use your knowledge to start thinking up new organisms that have not been defined, actually have never existed. Ultimately, there's no limit to the kind of life form you can create. Here we have a biological self-replicating organism whose parent was a computer file, an email attachment, if you will. And it's a document on a computer that we can edit just like any other document. I think the headline, Scientist Creates Life, is going to have a seismic impact on our culture. When you can sit there and say, I'm going to take base pairs of DNA and arrange them in some kind of a sequence that makes a bit of inorganic matter come alive, you're doing something that's unbelievably important in terms of our understanding that life boils down to biological processes, nothing magical, nothing ineffable, and something pretty scary. Do we have the wisdom to start tinkering with the genetic code and bring back species that you know, were gone? Maybe they were gone for a reason. If we don't have the wisdom to extend beyond biology, we should have thought of that a thousand years ago because we've been doing this a long time. Not this particular step, but human life expectancy was 23 a thousand years ago. It was 37 200 years ago. Uh, you and I wouldn't be around if it hadn't been for this kind of advance going beyond the limitations of biology. We knew this was going to be potentially powerful if we did it, and so we asked for ethical review before we actually did the first experiments back in the 1990s. And we've been trying to push the ethical discussion, the policy discussion, alongside of the scientific advances. So I think it's certainly one of the first times in science where that's happened, where those questions were asked first, not afterwards. The first thing people may see is uh, next year's flu virus could come from this process. Uh, because now instead of taking months to make something, we can make it in 24 hours. Look how much time it took to get the H1N1 sure. vaccine out last year, and months. a lot of people died because of that delay. So, and How about reacting to emergencies like the oil spill in the Gulf? Could that potentially have helped? We hope to go in the other way, like preventative medicine. If we can get us weaned off of oil by using these biological processes to capture carbon dioxide back and convert it to fuel, that gives us hope that uh, there may not be uh, the, the need for oil spills in the future. This has the potential to do great good. We can have cheap food, cheap energy, uh, develop uh, vaccines, develop new drugs. However, we know that bacteria and viruses and every living thing mutates. Uh, it's possible mutations can occur. It's possible that when working in a lab, something could become dangerous or is dangerous and could escape and affect people. It can affect fragile ecosystems, it can harm livestock. As this technology becomes widely available, there are inevitably going to be people who will try to use it for harmful purposes or who will be like biohackers. They will start doing reckless experiments or experiments that could have unintended harmful effects. And in your worst fantasy nightmare moment, where does this technology lead? Well, this is clearly a dual-use technology like almost any modern technology is. So the worst scenario for me would be somebody using this technology deliberately cause harm to others. And so uh, we're working with the government, having these discussions broadly uh, to make sure there's a discussion what, what are the right safeguards in that direction.